If you didn't know already guys, the wheels have already refreshed. I did my mass pulls for all my accumulated tokens. The timing was pretty good for me. So I managed to get my pulls for the month done for November when the wheels refreshed and went live in game. If you wanna check out that video, there is a link in the top right hand corner just to show you what sort of luck I got or didn't get as the case may be. If you haven't pulled already, best of luck on those pulls, but now on to this video guys. Hello survivors, welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a first look at a new event coming to the game and it is called Ice Gauntlets. The Ice Gauntlet does seem to revolve heavily around raiding but it does seem to be a faction raid event where you can walk away with some s-class cards among other things reading through the introduction it says ice gauntlet oh the weather outside is frightful but raiding still needs to be done your camp will definitely be needing an extra helping of supplies to make it through the winter so it's time to rally your faction and head out and raid some unsuspecting targets the event dates are as follows. It starts on the 11th of December at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and it ends on the 23rd of December at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Going over the event overview, it says you and your faction mates will have to win raids in order to complete the daily faction mission event. Every raid won by yourself or a faction member will count towards the progress of each milestone, which awards you with ice scrapers and frozen walker heads. The ice scrapers you obtain will be used as energy in the old school ice gauntlet road map which will be available throughout the entire event and which rewards you with frozen walker heads s-class cards and other rewards frozen walker heads can be traded in the gray market for s-class cards and platinum mods also as a survivors club member you will receive 900 frozen walker heads for free during the event now there are some details on the daily faction mission event as well it resets every 24 hours and there are going to be two tiers as a faction if you do 80 raids you will get 20 ice scrapers each and as a faction if you do 160 raids which would be 80 more they wouldn't be separate missions it will be 160 total you'll get 50 frozen walker heads on top so it's definitely worth trying to hit those 160 this does mean on average everybody has to do five and ten people have to do six raids every single day which is only your you know your normal stock raid energy so that shouldn't be too much of a problem going over the roadmap details the ice gauntlet roadmap will be available throughout the entire event use the ice scrapers earned through the daily faction mission events to slowly make your way through all three acts of the old school roadmap following old school rules the roadmap will only be able to use fighters that are five stars or below. This is currently also the case for an event that's ongoing called Frozen Past, so you should be able to use the same teams in both roadmaps. Old School Ice Gauntlet roadmap has three acts, ten stages each. Act one costs five ice scrapers per stage, a total of 50. Difficulty is S1. Enemy types are all walkers. Stage rewards, ten frozen walker heads, so you'll be able to get 100 from each stage combined. Act rewards, 80 mod scrap and two roadmap choice boxes. The act two is costing of five scrapers per stage, total of 50 again. Difficulty this time is S3. Enemy types are gonna be increased to walkers and fighters, and the stage rewards will be increased to 20 frozen walk heads as well per stage, so it will be 200 this time round. The final act rewards are two gold mods and three roadmap choice boxes, bringing a total of roadmap choice boxes up to five. The last act costs 10 ice scrapers per stage so a total of 100 the grand total there will be 200 ice scrapers needed s4 is the difficulty the enemy type is going to be fighters stage rewards are 30 frozen walker heads this time round, so another 300 on top and the act rewards you do get a platinum mod and five roadmap boxes again get bringing your total rewards of up to 10 roadmap choice boxes and the roadmap choice boxes have the following cards mateo shiva priya and wang fa so you'll be able to get 1,000 cards of a character of your choice out of there. Lastly, there is the Grey Market. Your Frozen Walk heads can be turned in for cool rewards in the Grey Market. S-Class card choice boxes with Abraham, Nor, Negan, Rick or Carl. 300 of each cost 300 Frozen Walker heads. By my calculations, I think we should be able to get two of these from running the entire roadmap, and then you will be able to maybe get some extras just from doing the daily missions with your faction. The Platinum mods cost 300 Walker heads each as well, so you can decide, do you want 300 cards of a particular character, or do you want a Platinum mod? Lastly, we do have the five Burts, being able to use your 10 extra ice scrapers. So if you do get extra ice scrapers on top of the 
was it 200 that I think you needed to complete the roadmaps, you should be able to turn them in for five birds with a stock of up to four. Of course, if you are a Survivors Club member, you will get 900 of these Frozen Walker heads for yourself. So you'll be able to say, take three of those four Platinum mods straight away, or three of those S-Class card choice boxes straight away. So this is the Ice Gauntlet, and I know some people maybe had some flashbacks to the last Frozen Walker head event. That was a purchased Frozen Walker head, and I, maybe some people have blocked it out. It wasn't the best event. It was about leveling up characters. Fortunately, this one actually looks pretty good. It is going to drop right after a raid tournament. That is the main downside, but it does look like it is a daily mission event, but the rest looks pretty reasonable. There are some decent S-Class cards available in the gray market. The ones for the roadmap, unfortunately, a lot of people have these characters already, so a lot of people are going to be going for duplicates. That is obviously a big downside. Those characters are quite old. However, Priya, Mateo, and Wang Fa are quite usable. So if you haven't got those three characters already, I would recommend those three over Shiva. Personally, I'm most likely going to go for the Platinum mods over the S-Class card choice boxes just because I don't think we get a great deal amount of cards in there. And there's no one I'm really prioritizing in those crates right now. If there was a Lee in there or an Andrea, I probably would have gone for the crates. The only character that has me thinking is maybe S-Class Carl, who could be cool to get. Just like cool to actually have a Carl. Not really whether I'd use him or not. He just, yay, it's Carl, sort of thing. Other than that, I'm not really sure. I do hope that while this event is going on, some of the current events like the Battle Pass and also the Bashing Through the Snow, those events that have missions going on for a weekly basis also cover rates. So it's like you're doing a lot more, you know, at the same time. It does have a, it, it does have a really good feeling when you're doing multiple different things, when you do like one raid, it covers like two or three events. I kind of like that. And they, I don't think they do that too often in RTS. Like I think they did a once upon a time, this is really a long time ago. Some of you may not remember this. They did have elite character tokens drop for like once or twice during raiding. Like if you just went and did raids, but they didn't do it during the tournament. So it didn't really feel like super beneficial to drop your cans. I think they need to make it, I mean, I've said this for a couple of years, they need to just line things up to make things feel much more worthwhile of putting in your time. Like, it just seems like really worthwhile to put your time in when you're doing multiple things with just one raid or one war attack, or it just it just starts to feel, have a much better feeling. And I'm sure a lot of you guys probably feel the same. So let's, fingers crossed, hope that the Battle Pass Week 2 requires you to do some raiding. The current bashing through the snow does, but that will effectively be completed just from the current raid tournament. So hopefully the next section of bashing through the snow does also require you to do some raids as well just so you can just get it done while doing this side event why not happy days would be great but that is going to be pretty much the end of my video though guys do tell me what you think about this event and any information like what cards you're going to pick up all that good stuff down in the comments i want to thank you very much for tuning into my video and as always keep on surviving guys keep on surviving